It's been a while since Spring Boot 3 got released. If you have already upgraded, do let us know what were some of the challenges which you faced when you are upgrading your Spring Boot version from 2 or 1 to 3. If you haven't upgraded, then let's look at the feature level breakdown and understand what are some of the breaking changes, what are some of the new advancements, features, improvements and also the deprecations which happened within the Spring Boot 3 version. This is how the agenda goes. We are going to see this particular breakdown in two different sections or two different parts. In the first part, we are going to look at why Spring Boot 3 was even created, what is the correlation between Java, Spring and also the Spring Boot frameworks and the libraries. We will look at the official feature release notes at a high level, what did Spring mention in their release notes. We will break down into some of the breaking changes with respect to Spring Boot 3.0 and also we will look at the new and noteworthy features which Spring has added. I'll show a quick demo on how to identify deprecated code or annotation or a method and also a new feature with a quick glimpse. Of course, I cannot show everything in a particular video, but then we will break down that in the further videos. In the next part, we will be looking at improvements, deprecations and also the support end dates. With this, let's get started. So why did Spring Boot even get created? If you look at the history of Spring Boot, Spring Boot was created on top of Java and the Spring Framework. So we have to correlate the versions of Java and Spring Framework when we are upgrading or when we are correlating Spring Boot versions. When initially Spring Boot was launched, it was using the Java version 1.6. It was also using the Spring Framework 4.0 plus, so which basically means 4.0 subversions, whatever. And Spring Boot was launched in April 2014 and they were naming that version as 1.0.0. That's the initial inception of Spring Boot and it started with JDK 1.6. Later, Spring upgraded to Spring Framework 5.0 and also version Java 8 was introduced and Spring Boot 2 was launched in March 2018. Most of us, I believe, are using Spring Boot 2 and in fact, we are using 2.1 because we upgraded to Java or the JDK 11 Whoever upgraded to JDK 11, they were able to easily move to Spring Boot 2.1. Whoever had to stay with Java 8, they stayed with the Spring Boot 2 version. If you see the correlation between the jump between Spring Boot 2 and Spring Boot 2.1, you can see that both the Spring Framework and the Java version changed a lot. However, with Spring Boot 3, there is a huge leap in terms of JDK upgrade, the Spring Framework update as well. So Java has now jumped to Java JDK. 17 which is the long-term support version and also spring framework has been upgraded to spring framework 6 which has a lot of improvements in terms of boot up times and ahead of time compilations etc so spring boot 3.0 got launched in november 2022 and it's been pretty solid in terms of providing features and faster boot up times compared to its previous versions however if you personally ask me what did i find interesting about spring boot 3 Except for the ahead of time compilation, I did not find it feature heavy, but still I would show you some of the features which I liked and which I think would be helpful for the developers and the community. So now let's look at the official release notes which Spring has released. Of course, the first and the foremost is the Java 17 baseline. So Spring Boot 3.0 is now baselined with Java 17, which basically means you cannot run any lower version less than Java 17 to run the Spring Boot version 3. Of course, recently they announced Java 20 as well. I'm not sure if Spring Boot 3 supports it already, but Java 19 is already supported. So if you're already ahead on time with respect to Java versions, you can still use Spring Boot. If you are lacking with the Java version, definitely you will have to upgrade the JDK along with it. In addition to it, Spring Boot 3 requires Graal 22.3 version or even the latest build to use the native build support and also the tools around it. I'll show you a quick demo in a bit on using Graal VM. It also requires the Spring Framework 6, which we just saw. In addition to it, Spring Security also got upgraded. So there will be a lot of changes with respect to security in terms of integrating with this Spring Security library. So if you're using heavily Spring Security for your Spring Boot application, do check out my upcoming videos with respect to security changes. In addition to it, Spring also migrated to the latest Jakarta EE. So Java EE is deprecated. So any 
package version which is like java x dot servlet got moved to jakarta servlets so that's what uh, is mentioned in the official documentation in addition to it there is mention about the graal vm native image support also there are a lot of improvements with respect to log 4j2 micrometer prometheus etc these all provide seamless integration within the new spring boot framework or the version 3.0 now let's look at some of the breaking changes and also the new improvements which were noteworthy the first and the foremost breaking change of course is the java version if let's say i'm using java 11 then there is no luxury for me to continue using java 11 but i'm forced to use java 17 in order to go to the latest version of spring boot so you will have to upgrade your java version to java 17 and it's a breaking change in addition to it spring framework 6 like we mentioned earlier it's again a breaking change because we need to upgrade to spring version 6 now the challenge with respect to upgrading jdk and the spring framework is the dependent libraries there are a lot of dependent libraries which may not be supporting java 17 and the spring frameworks so if you are having a application which has a lot of third party dependencies or maybe like downstream dependencies you have jars from some other team some other application created it some other library is getting integrated then just be cautious around integrating these libraries because they need to be supporting java 17 and also the spring framework 6 and in addition to it they also should be using jakarta ee if you have package versions such as java x dot servlet then you might end up in issue something like these right jetty for example if let's say you are not using tomcat as a web server and if you are using jetty then jetty 11 recently supported or started supporting jakarta servlets the imports now is going to be jakarta dot servlets instead of java x dot servlets right so lot of libraries which leverage the java ee package might be affected so you might want to upgrade those as well so just be cautious with respect to third party library upgrades because majority of the projects will be failing in this particular phase so you will have to upgrade the dependent versions of those libraries as well one another noticeable thing which i saw was with respect to spring data jdbc there is a breaking change in terms of providing a conditional bean auto configuration compared to what we used to do earlier so the, it's a minor change but still if you are using spring data jdbc then i would just mention it's a breaking change just take a look at you might have to just reinject the bean in terms of conditional bean injections using auto configuration if you were using spring boot 2.4 you know that the way we load properties and yaml file configurations into spring config got changed so in order to retain that we used a property called spring config use legacy processing that support has been dropped now with spring boot 3.0 so let's say you had application dot properties and also application dot yaml then with respect to spring boot application loader there was a change in spring boot 2.4 and above where we were loading everything into a hash map so spring boot was loading everything into a hash map and whatever gets loaded last will be the highest priority right and if you didn't want that kind of an op- option let's say you were using a lot of profiles and you didn't want to load the last profile first right in that case we used to use this configuration called as use legacy processing if you were using this that support has been removed from spring boot 3.0 so just be mindful that it's a breaking change in terms of loading properties when you are using different profiles the last one used to get loaded so that's the default now so don't be surprised if some property got changed if you're using just one property file which is like either application.properties or application.yaml i don't think you should have that issue but still be mindful that um, there is a priority in terms of whatever gets loaded last will be the one which gets stored because it's using hash map to store the values and the final one Spring Boot uh, removed all the add deprecated libraries uh, from its code base, right? So if let's say I'm using Spring Boot version 2.7, uh, let me show you a real life uh, demo. So I have a project called Load Shedding Example. Um, I recently did a load shedding video. I was using Spring Boot 2.7. So this particular version of uh, the application is using Spring Boot 2.7, and um, I want to identify what are the deprecated libraries in this particular version. So I want to upgrade to Spring Boot 3. but i also want to make sure i identify what are the deprecated versions which i'm using within the code base so for example i right now don't have any deprecated version usage so what i did i added this parameter called as um, hyphen w error and then hyphen x lint deprecation these are two different compiler arguments which i'm providing to my maven compiler plugin so using the maven compiler plugin i can just now do a maven clean compile and 
this should now help me in breaking the build if let's say there is a deprecation version um, so i'm going to use this deprecated class called as elastic search rest health indicator so i'll go to the deprecated example i already wrote the a simple um, uh, usage right i just use that particular class and then i am just uh, not doing anything i'm just assigning null right now if i recompile this code this code should break because i am now using a deprecated class in my code base notice that my build failed here saying that there is a warning and there is a compilation error because i specified w error so that means i want to fail my build if there is a warning in terms of deprecation so there is a deprecation warning so see here there is a compilation warning in terms of there is a deprecated uh, library so this is one example how you can identify what deprecated version of the libraries classes or annotations which you are using in your current version when you are upgrading to spring boot so this is a very useful uh, way in which you can identify um, breaking changes in terms of deprecations you shouldn't be surprised something got removed those are some of the breaking changes uh, which i found if you think there is another breaking change which i missed or anything which i missed just let me know in the comment section below others could benefit from that as well now coming to the new and the note for the features the gravium support uh, is something which is new uh, i have a quick demo for that as well uh, in order to use this i'm going to use the gravium jdk version 22.3 you cannot use the uh, open jdk version that doesn't work you will have to use the gravium um, version to support it so i have a docker um, i am using rancher desktop uh, running so docker is running as well right um, so in order to run an image you need a docker image obviously you need a docker runtime i have docker you can use any container runtime um, now how to build this particular project is i'm going to use the command maven clean package hyphen p native right this particular project graal demo is using spring boot 3.0.6 um, which is the latest version of spring boot as of today i'm using this particular version now i want to create a gralvm image uh, i'll show you why gralvm is important in a bit uh, i'm now converting this particular jar file whatever gets created into an image so that it's easy for me to load into a containerized environment right now let me run this and you will see the power of ahead of time compilation which i was talking about uh, with respect to spring boot 3.0 now this particular project is getting built and uh, you can see that um, we are generating an image um, it's going to take few minutes and, and you see the java version which i'm using graal vm 22.3.1 and it's a community edition so i'm just using this particular version so this is going to generate uh, a graal image within our target folder right i'll show that image in a bit but the idea of this particular graal image is it's going to compress our jar file into a format where you can easily start up the application in seconds or may maybe less than seconds or even in milliseconds right uh, in this case i don't have any code in this particular graal demo so i should be able to start this particular application in milliseconds but generally spring boot is famous for starting up time i mean it takes a lot of time even for a hello world application right uh, but with graal and over the period of time in the last few years spring boot has been working in terms of improving their startup time and it's very clearly visible with respect to the new graal vm uh, version and also the spring boot 3 if you don't know what is graal vm i have made a separate video on what is graal vm do take a look at that as well so the graal image got successfully built and we can see that the artifacts are now present in the target folder let me go to the target folder and you can see that there is a graal demo which is an image so this particular project is graal demo so earlier we used to run something like java hyphen jar and then just run that uh, run the java application or we just have a container and then we run that container right we go to docker images and then from there we used to run it now we have created a graal image so i can just do a graal um, demo and we should be able to spin up our spring boot application notice that this particular application came in almost like 83 um, milliseconds right it's as fast as whatever it could get right this is the power of ahead of time compilation so this is one of the major reasons i would want to move towards spring boot 3.0 because ahead of time compilation like reduces the startup time like anything and i can easily containerize my application with a graal native support and it provides lot of improvements in terms of processing and removing the jit compiler based approach towards graal approach now coming back to our spring boot uh, features which are new and noteworthy there are few other features like um, we saw in the previous uh, section 
micrometer uh, apis have been upgraded i don't have a demo to show quickly but definitely we will do that in the coming videos uh, there has been a lot of improvement in the micrometer api support so you can easily plug prometheus into micrometer and you can get stats out of it in addition to it there is also improvement in the log 4j2 the way we manage profiles environment properties their lookups and also the system properties a lot of improvement has been done with respect to that and also the prometheus integration with micrometer tracing has been improved if let's say you have micrometer tracing enabled then the span id and the trace id is automatically populated for prometheus so that you can get easily the trace id or the traceable information across your microservices when you are in a microservices setup so all those are done automatically out of the box by the latest version of spring boot and of course finally there are a lot of auto configuration changes with respect to um, the new elastic search java client library which elastic recently upgraded and again spring boot supports that these are some of the high level changes which i thought would be helpful in terms of understanding what are the feature level breakdown and how spring boot 3.0 fared in terms of improving its version for the betterment of the developer community in the next video i'm going to show you the improvements what spring boot has done the deprecations with respect to spring boot what are the annotations and the classes which got deprecated and finally we will look at what's beyond that what is the end date what is the support end dates what is the support end date for even the 2.0 versions um, i will be discussing all that in the next video if let's say you want me to specifically discuss anything with respect to spring boot do let me know that particular topic in the comment section below as always if you like the video go ahead and like it if you haven't subscribed to the channel go ahead and subscribe to it meet you again in the next video thank you very much